Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome back to the Thai Expat Daily Show. I'm your host, Kira Mack, as always, and thanks for joining us. Today is Friday, the 19th of August, 2022, and before we get into today's show, I'd like you to please like this video and do subscribe to the channel if you already haven't. So now that's all done, we're going to jump into the first story of the day. 14 suspects are arrested for alleged COVID-19 compensation fraud. 14 suspects, including several insurance brokers, have been arrested by the Economic Crime Suppression Division officers for allegedly using fake COVID-19 claim forms to defraud insurance companies. Commissioner of the Central Investigation Bureau, that's the CIB, Police Lieutenant General Chirapat, said yesterday that 11 of the suspects were customers who bought COVID-19 insurance and were persuaded by scammers to use fake COVID-19 claim forms to get compensation from the insurance companies. He said that each of the 11 suspects had received 50,000 baht in compensation, but they had to pay a 30,000 baht commission to the con men. He also said that three of the suspects were insurance brokers who sold policies to their customers but did not record the customers' names in the system and pocketed their insurance premiums. He estimated that the losses incurred by insurance companies in the scam amounted to about 53 million baht. The scam was exposed after insurance companies analysed claim forms and discovered that the numbers on some of the forms did not match the numbers recorded in the system. They then alerted the Office of the Insurance Commission, that was the OIC, and the Economic Crime Suppression Division. Police are expanding their investigation to determine whether more people were in on it or involved in the scam. A senior legal expert at the OIC said that if more people are involved in the scam, insurance customers will be the ones who will suffer because they will be having to pay more for their insurance to recoup the insurance company's losses from the fraud. Several companies in Thailand were already in deep financial trouble due to the massive quantity of genuine claims for compensation from customers who bought COVID-19 insurance policies under the found paid done policy. Now, I think it was probably inevitable that we're going to have some kind of fraud and scams within the COVID-19 insurance system. Uh, let's go back to the very beginning and it was April when you started to see these COVID-19 insurance policies come out. But this was at the time when the country and the government had shut down the borders. So there was no flights in and there was really no flights out. So people couldn't get out. Thailand had thought that the COVID problem was already solved by closing its borders and they had never realized that well actually COVID had already been here and was spread through the country. Now, of course, many people bought this insurance policy because they were scared and they, they didn't know what the virus would do to them. So they thought, well, if something happens, at least I have this to fall back on. And that's basically what happened. Loads and loads of people bought these insurance policies. Indeed, companies bought them for their employees as an extra benefit. Of course, it was just as a lot of them were laying people off, but still, they still had the policy that ran for a year. But of course, what happened here in Thailand was COVID started to take off, more and more people got infected, and then more and more people were claiming back. Of course, then what happened was, after all these claims were being made, some insurance companies actually went out of business and bankrupt, and some came, some very, very big companies here in Thailand went to the brink of nearly going bankrupt, but somehow survived. And of course, within this, there was always going to be the opportunity for fraud and scams. And that's what we're seeing now. And that's what we're seeing the police uncover at the moment. And I'm sure if they dig deeper and deeper, they're definitely going to find a lot more fraud in the system. And of course, as they say, that's only going to affect more and more people who buy insurance policies through these companies. Because what's going to happen is the premiums, of course, will increase for them to recoup what they've lost. And that, at the end of the day, is not a benefit for anybody. Well, except the scammers who seem to so far have done a good job in getting away with it. And moving along, public consent required for pilot 4am extension of Khao San pub hours. Thailand's Ministry of Tourism Sports will propose its pilot project to allow pubs and bars in Bangkok's Khao San area to operate until 4am instead of 2am to the Centre for COVID-19 Situation Administration, that's the CCSA, and yes, we still have the CCSA and still have the emergency decree. Two years later, COVID is pretty much gone. Nobody talks about it anymore. But anyway. But it will have to get consent from the people living in the neighborhood as well, said Tourism and Sports Minister Piapat Rechabakarn last night. Accompanied by tourist police and officials from Pranakan District, the minister toured the Khao San Road and held informal talks with several night spot operators about the extension of operating hours. 
He said that this pilot project has to receive the consent of most people in the Kaustan neighborhood, without which it cannot proceed. Adding, however, that people in the neighborhood will stand to benefit from extra income if they agree to the project. The minister pointed out that about 60% of pub patrons in the Kaosan area are foreign tourists and extending the operation hours will boost spending. According to the minister, 1.7 million tourists visit Thailand last month and arrivals for August so far are more than 1.2 million, he said. Then he hopes that extension of operating hours will encourage more foreign arrivals. Piapat said he is not discouraged by the opposition of his plans from some academics because he wants to see a quick economic recovery in Thailand and one means of achieving this is to encourage more tourists to visit the country, not just for sightseeing but entertainment as well. The minister is due to attend a meeting of the CCSA tomorrow during which he will float his project for initial discussion, adding that a detailed plan needs to be created and consultation with the Interior Ministry is required as the ministry is responsible for controlling the operation of night spots across the country. Piapat said he expects the detailed project plan to be considered by the CCSA in October. So the plan is at the moment that they are hoping to roll out 4 a.m., Opening hours to the likes of Khao San Road, Tong Klor, uh, Patia, um, Patong, uh, Khao Lak, and the other place was in Krabi, um, Aonang. And they would increase the hours from 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. Of course, um, they seem to can't do anything right here. They have to have a pilot project first, and they might get approval by October or November. I mean, see, nothing seems to be able to be done quickly here, which makes you wonder, by the way, why the CCSA and the emergency degree still exist if everything takes this long. I was of the opinion, or under the impression, that the CCSA and the emergency decree was there so it could speed things up and bypass laws that already existed. But it seems that the current... Um, emergency degree is there only for one reason and that is to kind of put a uh, dampener on the street protests that were happening in late 2020. Again that's just my opinion but it seems to be opinion of a lot of people but nevertheless let's get back into this. So they're trying to what they're going to do is first they're going to have a pilot project in Kaosan Road area and they're going to pilot it to 4am. Of course they have to get the uh, overwhelming uh, permission of the people in the neighborhood which I think is a good thing because you know at the end of the day if there's people who live there or, you know and will have their lives disrupted until a later stage in the evening you know I think um yeah they should have a say in it and it's not just all about the bar and the club and what they want of course the government seemed to frame everything so wrong I mean it's all picked up by the media and reported or by the international media and reported that you know Thailand want to open to 4 a.m because we need more money from the tourists and it's probably not the best thing or the best kind of statement to be putting out there. Now, I saw a guy on Twitter today and he made a really good point. Why don't you frame it as, you know, we want tourists to have more fun later into the night and enjoy themselves and, and enjoy their time here in Thailand and not be restricted by time when they go out. That sounds like a much better way to do it. Of course, they can't do that here because the only obsession here is getting money. And instead of framing tourism about being fun, about enjoying yourself, having a good time, it needs to be about how much money we can take from the foreign tourists. That is exactly what it's all about. And look, every country does the same thing, but not every country frames it so honestly that, you know, it gets reported that way in the international media. It comes across as nearly greedy, you know. And as I said, it would be nice maybe to frame it a little differently. And put a positive spin on the 4 a.m. opening to the international tourists out there so they get this idea oh thailand are really going all out to try make sure that tourists have a good time when they got get here but that's not how it's being done at the moment but nevertheless i'd love to know guys what you think because i've had my say do you think it's a good idea these 4 a.m opening hours do you think um you know it's a bad idea do you think if you lived in a neighborhood where they were planning to do this would you vote for or against it i'd love to know your comments as always guys down in the comment section and moving along yet again, and our uh, health minister here, Anotan Sharvakul, has been at it again. Now, before I get into this story, Anotan is the guy who labeled foreigners as dirty farang, if we all remember back in late or early 2020, just as COVID was starting to grip the world. So pot smoking tourists are not welcome in Thailand, says the health minister. Thailand's health minister on Wednesday discouraged tourists from visiting the country only to smoke weed just two months after new laws were passed that have largely decriminalized the drug. 
We don't want those kind of tourists, Anatan Sharfakul told reporters when asked about recreational marijuana use among foreign visitors. In 2018, Thailand became the first Southeast Asian country to legalize cannabis for medical use. In June, the entire plant was decriminalized, leading to widespread recreational use. Despite the government's pleas against getting high, cannabis businesses with special smoking rooms have been a hit with locals and visitors. But those smoking in public risk facing a three-month jail sentence or fines of up to 25,000 baht, and that's approximately 700 US dollars. Anatan's comments come even as foreign arrivals start to pick up in the tourism-reliant country. Southeast Asia's second largest economy expects 8 million to 10 million arrivals this year, above an earlier forecast of 7 million. Last year, the pandemic slashed foreign arrivals to just 428,000, compared with a record of nearly 40 million in 2019. Thailand has focused its cannabis policy on the 28 million baht industry built around its medical and health benefits. Anatan said, however, recreational use could be explored once there was better understanding of the drug. It might come in the near future, he said. Thailand's cannabis policy has also drawn interest from regional neighbours like Malaysia, which is studying the use of cannabis for medical purposes. So yet again, the country are trying to attract tourists. They've legalised the drug, which in all truth has been smoked left, right and centre around the country. You know, you can walk around different places, you'll smell it. And this guy, yet again, is out there saying, we don't want those tourists coming to our country. But yet you're the guys who've legalised it. You actually managed somehow to legalise it without having any laws whatsoever governing smoking in public, anything to do with uh, the drug around schools, pregnancy. There was no health warnings until people started to ask, what are the rules? And you had to all scatter. And suddenly now you don't want those tourists. I don't wonder what tourists you do want coming to Thailand. It's always confused me. First, and if we all can go back six, eight months ago, they wanted the big rich tourists to come to Thailand and spend all their money. Then, well, it kind of went against that because they decided they wanted to open casinos. And then now they want late opening hours, which really doesn't attract you know, the big spenders, the later opening hours. And of course, then they wanted the full moon party to be extended till 4 a.m. And I'm not quite sure they know exactly what kind of tourists they want. But this is how it works. If you legalize cannabis in a country and that pretty much everybody is now smoking it wherever they want, there's shops open where you can freely go in and buy, you know, a roll and get started and, and do whatever you want, then expect that you're going to attract a certain kind of person because they're going to come thinking, yes, I can come to Thailand and I can smoke weed. It's fairly easy to get there's no problem anymore I'm not going to spend the rest of my life in prison if I get caught with some and that's where it's at there's no point then going on and saying we don't want those kind of tourists coming here you'll get the kind of tourists based on the policies that you've created in your country and at the moment you've legalized cannabis everybody around the world seems to know about it and that's the person who will come to your country to enjoy it I mean, I think there's no point whining about it and, and saying that you don't want these people. These people are coming and there's nothing you can really do to stop them. Because actually, the health minister is the one who had it in his uh, party's manifesto, you know, back in 2019 during the election. And this is one of his party's promises that he's managed to bring to the people. He promised this to the people and he's done it. Uh, so, yeah, that's the way it is. I'd love to know, guys, though, what you think. I mean... Do you think it's been a good idea to legalize cannabis? For me, for medical use, I think it's absolutely a fantastic idea. And cannabis has been shown to have many, sorry, many medicinal uh, uses. But then again, if you don't have rules regarding the smoking in public or even the smoking of it in your home, what, why talk like this? You know, why, why do they talk like this? It's a very strange situation. But do you think it was a good idea? And do you think they should have went the whole way? I mean, pretty much like they've done in Holland, but have areas where you can do it and have it in a controlled, you know, zone. I think things like that would be better rather than the way they've done it now. But of course, they'll learn, I guess, along the way and make different rules and regulations and things will change 50 to 100 times before we ever get the actual law. But I'll leave it up to you guys in that comment section and uh, I'd love to hear your opinion on it all next story and in the last show we discussed the new LTR visa um, for I guess they were trying to pawn it off as a digital nomad visa which is not it's for working professionals in Thailand because a lot of the requirements would not apply to a digital nomad so today what we're going to talk about is the um, digital nomad visa yet again but we're going to talk about uh, the part that's for retirees people looking to come to Thailand and retire 
So as again, we'll introduce, Thailand is introducing its new called long-term resident visa, which will be known as LTR, which is a program that provides a range of tax and non-tax benefits to enhance the country's attractiveness as a regional hub for living and doing business for high potential foreigners. Now, for retirees coming to Thailand, you have to be 50 years and older, and you have to have an annual pension or a stable income. So the basic requirements to be able to get this LTR visa as a retiree is you must have a personal income of at least 80,000 US dollars per year at the time of application. In case your personal income is below 80,000 per year, but not, not, no less than 40,000 per year, applicants must invest at least 250,000 US dollars in Thai government bonds, foreign direct investment, or Thai property. And you must also have health insurance with at least $50,000 coverage or social security benefit uh, for treatment in Thailand, or at least a hundred thousand US dollars on deposit in a bank account. Now, as we discussed with the benefits, right, for let's say uh, working professionals, the benefits for retirees are not great. It's basically you get a 10 year a renewable visa, you get fast track at international airports, and you don't have to do the 90 day reporting anymore. And that is the only benefit that I can find from wanting to sign up. Now, also, this will cost you 50,000 baht. So, what's that? About $1,500? I might be a little off there, but that's what it'll roughly cost you for the application. Now, I don't know if there's a yearly fee then when you go back to get this next year's stamp or not. I'm not 100% sure. There could be because that's the way things work here. But I'm not really sure this is value for money. You're probably better off just getting, you know, a retirement visa in your home country and just doing the yearly extensions. You know, if you meet that requirement, because to me, this is just basically a cash grab, 50,000 yeah, tie back for the visa. And then after that, the benefit, mm, I don't know. I just can't see. Plus some of the requirements, you know, that you must have 80,000 US dollar pension per year seems a bit much to me and if you don't have that you have to have a ton of money you know invested in thailand so yeah i think it's way over the top and i just don't know who this is appealing to now one of the things that i have noticed is this ltr visa has suddenly stopped getting very much uh airtime now i'm giving it a bit because i think it's worth talking about and we're going to go to other aspects in other shows but today we're just discussing retirees and yeah i just think it's not going to go anywhere as i said you can apply from the 1st of September. So we'll see, and we'll probably hear. I mean, if we hear nothing at the end of September, right, about this, and we start to hear no figures, how many people applied for it, then we can start to understand that it probably was not a success, and it'll be the last we hear of it very quickly. But again, that's the uh, rules and regulations surrounding that. You actually have to go to a special website to apply. You have to send in your stuff, and they will approve you. They will approve you or not approve you, I guess, based on uh, the paperwork you send. So see, it seems like a process. Apparently, it's done by the same company that do the Thai Elite visa, and you kind of go through that similar kind of process. But anyway, guys, we'll keep an eye on this, and we'll see. Hopefully, they'll release some figures in terms of how many people have signed up for it. Personally, I don't think it's going to be many, but yeah, we'll see. And finally, the Phuket News Daily Report. Phuket officials order fire safety checks. All nightlife venues in Muang District will be inspected for the fire safety by the end of the month, with operators being given 30 days to rectify any deficiencies in required fire safety measures, the Phuket Vice Governor has announced. Man woman injured as car slams into a power pole. A 32-year-old male driver and his 26-year-old female passenger were rushed to hospital after the car they were driving uh, struck a power pole west of a Herwin's monument early this morning. Navy brings ashore injured cargo crewmen. The Royal Thai Navy Third Area Command conducted an operation to bring ashore an injured crewman from a passing cargo ship off Phuket's west coast yesterday. And finally, Phuket looks to tackle teenage pregnancies. A meeting was held earlier this week focused on the issue of adolescent pregnancies in Phuket, detailing its impact and unveiling a draft strategy to help tackle the problem. And guys, once again, thank you for tuning into the show. We will have something over the weekend for you, possibly Sunday with a live stream on a topical issue. And we'll post that on our community uh, section on the web, on the YouTube channel, and you'll get to know when it's coming on. You can hopefully be able to participate with us during the live chat. So hopefully we'll see you then. And guys, if not, have a great weekend and we'll see you all Monday morning.
But ultimately, with this story or anything else that stood out to you today, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Because yes, this is a new show, but it's also a conversation. Now keep that conversation going. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, share the video, and do all the good stuff that does help that YouTube algorithm. But ultimately, my name is Kieran Mack. You've been listening to the Thai Expat Daily Show, and we will see you next time.